Hi Libra, welcome to your July 2022 Taroscope with me Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, my readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign. So whether you're a sun, moon or rising sign Libra, this is for you. And I always advise that you watch all three to get a clearer, more complete picture of how they're going to speak to you. With that said, remember they are general readings. Not everything's going to resonate with everybody and that is just fine. You should always use your own discernment. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. And they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So for your actions and interactions with the world at large over the course of this month okay so your jumping card is the five of wands so if you're a libra uh, when it comes to your actions and options this is looks like a month where you are going to be very busy it looks like a month where you're really looking to reach out or branch out your network in some way shape or form so this could be connecting with like-minded souls it could be that you're working on creating a group or a community of your own I am going to say this is likely to be a month that sees you being a little bit more competitive than people know your sign for. Uh, so that could be great. But yeah, with the Five of Wands is a very dynamic card. Uh, and I am going to say this could be a month that tends to be a little bit loud. So whether this is you yourself being a bit more forthright, being a bit louder, like I said, bringing people together or spending time in spaces and places and with people that are, you know, uh, a, a little bit louder than the usual, uh, it wouldn't be a surprise to me. So um, yeah, it looks like a, a good month all in all though. Uh, when it comes to your communications and conversations you've got the seven of pentacles so in terms of whatever your whatever communities or uh, social groups or things that you're trying to build or put together this suggests to me that you're taking your time so if you are building a community if you're creating a club if you're joining a club there's a lot of talks about what constitutes the the spirit of the group or how is this going to go um you know and in a lot of ways i kind of see libra like very often they're kind of like you know what if nobody's going to lead then I will do it but they won't actively seek that sort of spotlight as it were um, what I like about this though that seven of pentacles it basically says that you're taking your time to really understand things which is great that's what you do you know naturally but remember the seven of pentacles is a card of patience it's a card of you know things taking time in order to really bear fruit you couple that with the five of uh, five of wands this could be talking over what it's going to take to get a group dynamic or a group understanding or realization to a certain point uh, what i will also say as well this could be a time where you're really taking time to understand your competition this could be a time where you're really starting to get clear on um, who is your competition? Why are they your competition? And more importantly, what does that mean? What do you have that they don't? What do they have that you don't? Um, this is getting really clear on some of those details. And because it is the Seven of Pentacles, this isn't a rush job. You're taking your time to really get the ins and outs or the nitty gritty of something. So I actually really like that. You know, Seven of Pentacles is communication. Yes, it doesn't mean, it means that things aren't necessarily moving fast, uh, but it does mean that maybe you know that slower pace of communication means that whatever you are building especially if it is with other people you understand it from the ground up and that creates a lot less hiccups for your love and relations what's going on with your partnerships you've got the emperor it's interesting that you should have this card in this position because obviously in astrology uh, your relationship so whether you're a sun moon or ascendant sign uh, libra Aries is your is the it's the house that is literally Aries is the sign should I say that is literally opposite your own. So the fact that you've got the Aries card or the Emperor uh, as the the energy of your love and your relationships, there's a few ways that this could show up. For those of you that are newly seeing somebody or there's somebody that you like, this could be a realization that actually you have competition. Um, it could be that maybe, uh, you know, it's not to say that this person's a player or anything like that. It's just to say that you really, unfortunately, you're not the only option in this case. It may be for some of you as well that you're starting to realize that somebody that 
that's in your life, you actually want a commitment with them. So maybe this is you going through the process of choosing this person and saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to get rid of all of the um, the other potential suitors, let's say. Uh, remember, this is a card of commitment. And with that seven of pentacles, for those of you that are partnered, married, or in long-term commitments, this could be you really going through the, you know, through the relationship with a fine tooth comb to say, how do we hammer out the details of this relationship? And more importantly, how do we create a, a partnership or a relationship that feels more sort of committed where it is just us. So I like this for you working on the, you know, the specifics of a relationship. I actually think that could be great. And then when it comes to your, haha, look at this. When it comes to your money and materials, you have your card as a Libra is the justice card. So this could be new financial commitments that show up. For some of you, this could be a new financial commitment that comes up in a relationship or as a result of a relationship. For some of you, this could be tying yourself to a partner or to a relationship in some way. There's definitely an air of you building something that relies on or connects to other people. And this could be where the money is coming from or coming, you know, coming in. There are new contracts this month. There's new financial opportunities in the air, absolutely. Uh, with that justice card, this is you really, you know, putting your name or your signature to something and deciding that it's worth going for or after. So this could be fantastic. Um, I really like that for you guys. So for your uh, weeks of the month, for the first week of the month, you have the moon card with the five of wands. So something that you do want to be aware of here, your spirit of competition or whatever you're trying to build, it may have an element of the past about it. So this might be where you are bringing someone or something back from the past that you have either worked with or collaborated with before. If it is something that had a very highly competitive edge to it, uh, maybe it's a sport, maybe it is, uh, you know, a business, maybe it's a, something that relies on sales in, in a saturated market, etc. You just want to be sure that everybody is on the same page. And this is one of the reasons I think you're probably taking your time when it comes to the conversations to really understand what's going on. For your second week of the month, you have the Hermit card coupled with the Seven of Pentacles. That is a lot of knowledge and a lot of information. So this is you sifting through knowledge, sifting through the the information that you got that you've you know that you're getting that is on hand for you. The Moon card with the Hermit. That's an interesting pairing as well. So the Aries card or the Emperor and the Justice card. These are direct opposites in the zodiac. The Moon card and the Hermit card are also direct opposites in the Zodiac. Um, so these two represent Aries and Libra, and these two represent uh, Pisces and um, Virgo. So it's a really interesting mix of energies that you have. Uh, that second week of the month, though, it's like you're really going through everything with a fine tooth comb. And it may be a time where you're not listening to anybody else. Like that second week of the month, this is you really deliberating what you think, what you feel. What does my gut say to me? Um, and I like that. I think that's a good place to be. For your third week of the month, you've got the chariot card coupled with the emperor. So the third week of the month could be really good for relationships, but it could also be a time where you are getting very clear um, on how things are going to proceed. So for those of you that are single, you could be winning the affections of that person, you know, that maybe you want to date, maybe you, you know, have envisioned yourself with, maybe they've said, you know, there is somebody else in the picture, I just need to decide sort of, uh, the, the thing that I like about this is, even if it's you that's dating other people or it's them, there's a lot of transparency here. There's nothing like, it's not like, oh, you find out, oh, so you're dating three other people at the same time and now you just want to choose which one of us is best. Like there's, there seems to be a lot of openness and a lot of transparency about the fact that, you know what, yes, I'm dating multiple people. I'm just trying to decide which, you know, if this is the, the one for me and if it is, then we go, you know, one-on-one -on -one monogamy. Um, um, and I really like that because it, it means that you're not, it's like neither one of you is denying yourselves, but there's a really strong sense of, of self 
and a, a strong sense of understanding of, okay, I am going to make this decision, but it has to be my decision. And with the chariot card there, it, su it suggests that you win or they win you, um, you know, which I think is kind of sweet. Um, I, I'm a hopeless romantic, so you'll have to ignore me. <laughs> Maybe you hate that idea. For those of you that are partnered, married, or in long-term commitments already, I really like this for you because it's like whatever corners you are turning together, you're deciding that that success should be reinvested in some way. So it's like whatever, you know, whether that's time, whether it's resources, maybe for some of you this is moving in together, especially for those of you that have been partnered for a long time, but you live in separate sort of apartments and stuff. This could be a consolidation of that. And then when it comes to the fourth week of the month, you've got the tower card with the um, the justice card. So be mindful of your financial commitments. This is not a month to promise, you know, hundreds of thousands when you can only deliver sort of hundreds. Um, this is a time, and also when it comes to any financial commitments and contracts, you just want to be sure that um, you're you're getting what you're you know what you've been promised. If it ain't in writing, it ain't true, and that is the the bottom line. I know that sounds really harsh, but that's how I want you to approach things this month when it comes to your resources. So if your boss says, "Oh yeah, you know we're going to give you a pay rise, or there's going to be a bonus," that's great. Can I have it in writing? Um, you know, or someone says, "Oh, you know this month I'm going to give you this," or "Yeah, you know what? I'm totally there. I, I, you know, I'm going to put in this much." If it ain't in right in it ain't true okay that's that's how you want to approach this uh, the other thing with the tower card as well um, you're just wanting to be mindful of the things that you are going to commit to it may make financial sense now but make sure you do the numbers make sure you really tally everything up so that you can decide yes okay in the future this is also going to make sense so for your new moon and full moon your new moon is in the sign of Leo, and this is going to be in, um, oh, come on, brain. For you, this is going to be in your fifth house. Uh, your fifth house, sorry, I'm lying. For you, the, full, the new moon is going to be in your 11th house of higher aspirations, goals, and dreams. It's also the place of benefactors, where people can assist you, where people, structures, networks, commitments, new friends, all of that kind of stuff may be showing up for you as a result of this new moon or from this time in. But remember, it is a new moon, so you don't get to see everything yet. It's going to take its time to percolate and to grow. Your new moon message is the gate 51 and shock. So this, although this is this tower shows up in the full, the fourth week of the month, the gate 51 and shock is basically the tower card. So this is telling me that, around, oh yeah, and that is the fourth week of the month because it's on the 28th. So this Leo new moon that's happening on the 28th of July, that is one that you need to keep your eye on. There's obviously something around that time that's coming up for you that you need to be aware and prepared of and for, all right? Could be a, a change of direction or a change of focus that comes up very suddenly. So then your uh, full moon on the 13th of July in the sign of Capricorn is in your fourth house. So your fourth house is your home, your family, your property, the people that you live with and your traditions. It's also a very occult and, you know, very spiritual place because this is about your deep emotions, like who you really are at that deep core emotional level and how that's been... Um, developed over a lifetime and for this <laughs> look at that you got the gate for and answer so around this new moon uh, full moon should i say i love this card because it's not so much a prediction as it is an instruction and the message behind this is you ask a question of the universe uh, you know what should i move and then you know, you ask the question in your mind, you formulate that in the mind and you broadcast that out. You don't ask it sort of open, uh, you know, it's not a question that you ask sort of out loud. It's a question that you ask of the universe. Then you wait to see the external cues. So if you then start seeing things where there's horror stories about people moving, the place that you wanted to move to or that you were thinking about moving to has some 
awful disaster or whatever, those are clear signs that you should stay where you are. Uh, if you, I don't know, turn on the radio or the TV and there's talks about how, uh, you know, you can get a mortgage or, you know what, this place is, uh, you know, the rents here are really dirt cheap, etc. Or there's the external world gives you the answer. So like I said, it's not a prediction, it's more of an instruction. With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic month. Let me know in the comments how it shapes up. Take care and I'll see you soon.